So, uh, hello, I'm Al Bunshaft. I'm the managing director of Dassault Systems uh, North America, and uh, we're thrilled to be here in our virtual reality center in our North America headquarters campus in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Can you talk about what's going on behind us on this uh, holodeck virtual reality experience? Um, we have this VR center here in our executive briefing center because it shows what, how many of our clients are using our technology. Um, this virtual reality uh, scenario is used in a lot of uh, very technical areas. It might be for simulating manufacturing before manufacturing plants are built. Uh, it's used for virtual training. Uh, in, for example, the oil industry, where we can uh, take future employees onto oil platforms and train them before they actually go out to the platform itself, which might be, you know, many miles offshore. Um, and what you're seeing here in the background uh, comes from a project that we did that's actually featured uh, in a television advertisement we're running. We call it the Ice Dream Project. As a professor who had a dream for many decades that it should be possible to tow an iceberg from the North Atlantic to a more arid area such as the north of Africa um, using ocean currents and the wind primarily uh, and minimize the melting of the ice as a way to bring fresh water to areas that need fresh water. Can you give us a sense of how many of these setups exist around the world today that you guys or your clients have? It's used across a wider range of industries than you might imagine. So I would say that there are uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of hundreds of these setups. I know of some one of our clients in particular who's in the uh, consumer products industry that has 16 virtual reality centers around the world and they use it to evaluate uh, product designs. They use it to evaluate store layouts and product placement in the store uh, and they use it to research how you and I shop and so they do things like eye tracking uh, where are we looking when we go in the store? Uh, when we pick up a product, where do we look next? Uh, because that's where they, when we pick up the shampoo, they want us to look next where the conditioner is, for example. Um, so I'd say there's hundreds of them. Uh, people might not be surprised to find it in very high-end manufacturing environments like uh, aerospace or automotive, but it's actually permeating many, many industries. So virtual surgery, for example, can be done in a virtual operating room, training doctors. Uh, we've worked with a doctor who's training medical students in emergency room procedures uh, in a virtual environment. So there's many, many examples. Can you talk about how this technology fits into the overall 3D experience that your company is currently focusing on? Our company has for over 30 years now been on a journey uh, at which um, 3D computer graphics is very much at the core of what we do. We introduced it to the industry over 30 years ago. Uh, we expanded that focus over time and now as we look forward what we envision is something we refer to as the age of 3D experience and what we mean by that is um, some things I think that are obvious and some that are not so obvious so for example uh, we're expanding our technology to be more precise and more realistic uh, we simulate today for example uh, crashing cars BMW is a client of ours they crash all their cars virtually uh, before they crash them, any of them in the real world. Uh, today we simulate crash test dummies. Why do we do that? Well, because we can't yet simulate all aspects of human beings, but that's what we need to simulate. So that's one example. That's maybe an obvious example. Uh, what we imagine doing though over time is being able to conceive of things, uh, create them all virtually, manufacture them, verify them virtually, uh, and then reach out to our target customers. Our clients will reach their target customers using this technology to get feedback before they ever build anything in the real world. So as our uh, technologies mature in many areas, we're leveraging science and engineering, of course, we're leveraging the world of gaming, uh, and we're bringing that all together in uh, environments that were never possible before that are allowing our customers to do things uh, in completely new ways. You just mentioned uh, car manufacturers. We have now up on the screen a car. Can you talk a little bit about what's going on here? Sure, sure. Um, in the auto industry, this technology has been used for some time. Uh, one, uh, one of the aspects of this setup is that those sidewalls you see there can actually open flat, and we can have a 38-foot long wall at which we can put on it a realistic size car. 
Um, and so car manufacturers started a number of years ago evaluating car designs that way before they went to prototypes of those. So they can evaluate many, many possible designs before they start building prototypes. Um, what we're doing now much further and what you see here is that we can start to evaluate not only the car design, the shape, etc., the styling, but also the ergonomics of the car. And even in, some of our customers are using this for manufacturing. So for example, um, we can get in the car and we can find out how are the controls placed? Are they comfortable for us? Uh, how's the visibility? We can do line of sight studies from the car. Um, do we have blind spots? Do we have inordinately large blind spots that would make the car unsafe? Um, in a manufacturing environment, we can evaluate things like uh, can the manufacturing technician comfortably get in maybe underneath the dash to turn the bolts that are required? Or if, if a person does this all day, are they going to be fatigued or cramped? Or um, So we can evaluate the ergonomics in a uh, not only a customer environment, but also for manufacturing, as an example. You guys are also exploring new technology when it comes to the fashion world. Can you talk about that latest endeavor? We have for um, many years expanded to what we see as adjacent opportunities. We build up expertise in an industry. We recognize that many of the techniques uh, that we use in that industry might be applicable to another industry, and we've grown incrementally that way. We now envision that it should be possible to use uh, technology like this in the fashion industry. And so we've chosen to partner with uh, some high-end uh, fashion designers, a uh, high-end watch manufacturer, a bag maker, uh, and to create something we call the Fashion Lab, which to a great extent is a technology sandbox for us to learn and our partners to learn because we know that this has applicability there uh, in the same way um, that uh, physical products are 3D designs, so are dresses, so are bags, so are watches. Um, and the promise of this technology allows those designers to not only do all the things these heavy manufacturers do, work with their suppliers, communicate and collaborate more effectively, but actually reach out to their target customers. Uh, and, and, and just like uh, a, a manufacturing uh, an automotive company maybe, uh, they can reach out to their target consumers, get feedback on products, evaluate them in real time, uh, and then adjust uh, their plans accordingly. And so there's a lot of potential for it, and we're very excited about that new area.